right so we were discussing this topic of indus valley civilization regarding its evolution different phases and all these things we started looking at it right so ivc so which got started as harappan civilization and then which became the great indian civilization it existed and we have seen certain important features and we have all we have seen the origin theories origin theories we have seen and then we have seen the features urban planning religion especially agriculture crafts and manufacturing and then seals right these are all the things we discussed as part of our discussion on indus valley civilization fine so now we will be looking at certain specific things especially religion we have we are done with seals we are done with and we will be looking at the trade and commerce part trade and commerce and the situation of overall economy you can say in one way or you can say economy regarding this aspect we have already seen that indus valley civilization people they had got long distance trade relations with mesopotamians egyptians this is beyond doubt and we have also got this site of lothar dockyard right and there is also another site surkatoda right this was also on the coast so there were sites there were dockyards saini ji kai din ke baad so these were the port cities or you can say dockyards which we find and regarding this trade and commerce aspect the most important thing was standard weights and measures standard weights and measures remember the thing that what you can say enthralled or you can say that thrilled the historians was that indus valley civilization especially in its mature phase it has got uniform weights and measures this was the special thing uniform weights and measures could be found thing was to measure a scale was used especially weights this was the progression right remember any civilization knowing the knowledge of mathematics especially complex mathematics and developing standard weights and standard measures means that that civilization it has got a lot of advancement so here in mohenjodaro civilization or you can say in this entire ivc thing entire civilization had uniformity in the weights and measures so that progression of the weights especially weights the progression was in the ratio of 1 is to 16 is to 32 is to 64 this was the progression ratio okay so ante endante manam general bhasha lo maatladukovalante 1 kg rai 16 kg srallu so whenever we go to any shop you will find stones that are used to weigh right so those stones if they are of uniform presence across the civilization it means that that civilization it has got a sense of unity in it right so that was present in indus valley civilization and another thing was 
scales they were used of 1 feet scales of 1 feet they were used 37 centimeters around 37 centimeters was there so 1 feet scales they were found in dockyards and also cubit feet cubit feet and 57.5 centimeters these scales were also present and a 1 feet unde scales are uniform ga unnai other the cubit feet unde scales unnai weights unnai in this ratio the weights were present and then scales that were made of ivory were there scales made of shell were also found shell to jesnavi ivory to jesnavi scales unnai right so ivory scale it was found at lothal and shell scale it was found at mohenjadaro shell scale mohenjadaro ivory scale at lothal And next, I said na, in Mesopotamian cities, Indus Valley civilization seals were found. The names of the cities were Susa and Ur. Ur I have told already. Ur city and Susa. These are the cities in which IVC seals were found. Indus Valley civilization seals were found. And one important industry, so lapis lazuli, all these were there. Bead making industry, this also we have already discussed. Bead making industry, it was found at Chanhudaro. Bead making industry. So, beads, they were one of the important component of exports. Right? This was the thing. And the other thing is that seals which were found those seals some say they were used as currency right some say they are of religious importance but some they even say that seals were used as standard weights because some seals they were in this proportion they were in this proportion so there is an argument saying that these seals might have been used as standard weights but standard weights it's not logical Right. Only if it is currency, only if it is of religious importance, then so many seals availability and all that, it would be logical. So, they being used as weights as the only reason of presence of seals is not logical, but they might have been used also as weights. Weights ga kuda upego padindrachu. If not only as weights, but even also as weights, they might have been used seals. Right. And then another important thing is that there were three transit points between Mesopotamia and Indus Valley civilization over the land. A three names Raskond. These were the three trading points between Mesopotamia and IBC over the land. 
not only the sea bond trade was there, overland trade was also there through this. And some historians they argue that Meluha is nothing but Mohenjadar. Right. So, Meluha is not a different city, it is simply Mohenjadar. So, that is also one argument. See, Mohenjadaro as such, it means the mound of the dead. Sevala Dibba, to be <laughs> plainly speaking, this was mound of the dead, that is it. So, because when they discovered Mohenjadaro, when they started excavating it and all that, they found lot of skulls they found lot of skeletons. So, that made them to name it as Mohenjadaro, which colloquially means mound of the dead. Fine. So, some say Mohenjadaro it has got other name that is Meluha. So, any city would not be named as mound of the dead, right Mohenjadaro. So, the actual name mind the actual name might be Meluha. There is this argument also. Fine. <laughs> so, this is the thing. So, this is about the situation of economy. So, bronze bead making, bronze sculpture, toy making, terracotta figurines, lapis lazuli and other precious stones, semi precious stones, gold, silver, copper and then exports and imports. All these were part of the Indus Valley economy. So, this shows that Indus Valley civilization, it has a huge dependence on trade, manufacturing and related services. So, it was the first transition from a predominantly agrarian society to predominantly, sorry, predominantly rural agrarian society to urban economy. So, this transition, it can be clearly seen because of all these findings, right. So, economy is important, this is the thing. So, the transition part, it is clearly proved by the evidences which we get. Fine. This is about the thing of Indus Valley civilization. There are certain sites you need to note down their speciality. Fine. We have already discussed about the script, right? Bostrophodus. So, Bostrophodus script right ninch left grass taro, left ninch mali right ke. So, this progresses in this way. Ide comfortable gundi gada? <laughs> right. So, right to left and then left to right. So, there is no strict rule with regarding where it should begin, where it should end. Fine. This is Bostrophodus script. Bostrophodus logosyllabic or pictographic. These are the uh, because of some commonalities found across the seals. Some commonalities regarding the usage of logos and syllabus, we came to a conclusion that they might have this pattern of right to left and left to right, okay, because of the commonalities in the pa pattern, that is it. Correct doubt hai kada, dhidhan ke unme. Right. So, coming to Harappa, the most important site or you can say the first site, Harappa. The first site. on the river Ravi. So, this site it has got 6 rows of granaries, 6 rows of granaries and then H type burials, H type burials. These are the two specialities of, two important specialities of Harappa. And then Mohenjadara. 
Mohanjadaro, obviously great birth. And then College of Priests. These are the two things. And then you know Lothal. Lothal is the dockyard and then you can say couple burials. Couple burials and then weights and measures. Weights and measures. And then Chanhudaro. Chanhudaro, the specialty is that this is the only Indus Valley civilization site which has got no citadel and it has got bead making factory. Bead making factory. And we all know the famous Dholavira. water storage mechanism, water storage mechanism and also multiple citadels. And then Kalibangan, Kalibangan famous for plowed fields. There are evidences of plow. So, plow was used, hoe was used. So, especially regarding plow, the evidences are in Kalibangan because of the presence of furrowed lands or you can say plowed fields. Plowed fields. And also, Fire altars, fire altars, the presence of Sakali so Bangar, this was the thing. And then coming to Rangapur, Rangapur, it has got yellow and grey parts of yellow and grey parts of pre Harappan people. So, you can say that this site Rangpur site it was existing from the early Harappan times or you can say even from the pre Harappan times and it continued to be the Harappan site IVC site. And then another important one Banwali. Banwali, this site it is famous for fire altars. It is famous for fire altars and also plow. Fire altars and then plow. Banwali, it is in Haryana. Code DG. Code DG is the place where the Harappan site or it is IVC site where you find stone houses. So, most of the Harappan civilization it has got sun dried bricks or burnt bricks, but here you find stone houses in Code DG. And next one, Raki Ghari. Raki Ghari. Raki Ghari, the importance is that Raki Ghari. 
Raki Ghari, the importance is that it is the largest IVC site, largest IVC site 350 hectares and it has also got female sculptures, female sculpture similar to that of Mohenjadaro bronze dancing girl. So, Raki Gadi is one thing, Dholavira we have already done right. And then Surkatoda, Surkatoda. Horse, the only site where we find bones of horse in entire Indus Valley civilization. Horse, bones of horse. bones of horse. See some sources they refer saying that horse like animals. Horse, zebra, no, donkey, no, we cannot say very clearly. So, some sources they say it like horse like animal. Some sources they confirmedly they say that it is horse. So, a vision land and there is confusion. Okay? So, you cannot complete you cannot be completely sure whether it is horse or not. Okay. This is the thing and uh, interesting thing here is because Indus Valley people they have got knowledge of several animals including rhinoceros all these animals, but the only animal about which they had very limited knowledge was horse. This was an interesting thing because they had long distance trade relations with Mesopotamia, Egypt and all that, but still they do not have got, they have got very little knowledge about this thing, horse, that is the problem. Okay? This is an interesting finding about IVC. And another important thing was iron. Iron, the knowledge of iron was also not at all present in the IVC. That is understood because iron, the technology of iron smelting, using it for weapons, tools and all that, it came at a later phase. Across the world, usage of copper and bronze it got started first and then civilizations got entered into this thing, usage of iron. So, it happened in a natural way like it happened across the world. Whereas, regarding horse, why they do not know horse or why they did not use horse extensively, we have got no idea. right? So, this is the thing and various explanations are given for this non-availability of horse. One explanation being, okay, silly explanation on coach, and and day, IVC people are peace loving people. So, they are not inclined towards wars, they have got no wars within their society. So, they were in no need of horse like animal. So, which is primarily for invasions, campaigns, long distance travel and all that. So, while there was no need of horse. This is one explanation that is given. One explanation, more logical explanation in Dante they have got abundance of other animals with them. So, it can be buffaloes, cows, cattle, sheep, piggery, fisheries and all that. And the utility of horse is mainly for long distance travel, long distance travel campaign and all that. And horse as dairy animal, it is not used. See horse mere world ekad na sare, it is generally not used as a dairy animal except in Central Asian region. In the rest of the world, you will not find horse as a dairy animal. right? Only in Central Asian countries, some Central Asian countries, where there is this lack of other animals, they use this horse milk and other such things. So, because IVC people had abundance of other animals with them, they never needed horse as a dairy animal. right? So, this was one explanation that is given that is given and regarding for long distance travel and all that they had cattle that was sufficient. So, cattle heavy duty animals like buffaloes all these things they were present with them. So, their use of horse they felt horse is of not that great consequence for them. Antopeo bade animal kadu anadi wal opinion and some historians 
they concluded ships they use the cattle regular but horse can't be used as heavy duty animal see when you need to carry large amount of minerals gauchu textiles gauchu edaina sare chaala baruvaina vaaddaniki they have got cattle so for doing this heavy load duties so they felt horse to be unsuitable for those heavy load duties adoka explanation edaina sare evar cheppina sare it is just an explanation you might have your disagreements no problem with it endukante id edi kuda it is not factual so these are all opinions expressed by historians based on their understanding of civilizations across the world they observed kazakhstan region they observed red indians right they observed bastar people right based on the observations made across the world they came to such conclusions because horses are not suitable sir, for heavy load duties they are not preferred dairy animals and all that ivc people might have thought horse is of not that utility of is of not so great consequence to them so they did not maintain it that's one that's one kind of explanation that is given okay ఎద్దులు ఉన్నాయా దున్నబోతులు ఉన్నాయి సో దే విల్ యూస్ దెమ్ వాట్స్ ది ప్రాబ్లమ్ దిస్ ఈస్ ద థింగ్ అండ్ అండ్ రిమెంబర్ వన్ థింగ్ ఇండియా స్పెషల్లీ ఎంటైర్ ఇండియా యూ కెన్ సే ఇండియా ఈజ్ ఎ ఇండియా ఈజ్ నాట్ ఎ న్యాచురల్ రీజియన్ ఫర్ హార్సెస్ ఓకే దట్ వీ నీడ్ టు అండర్స్టాండ్ జాగ్రఫికల్లీ స్పీకింగ్ ఇండియా ఈజ్ నాట్ ఎ న్యాచురల్ టెరిటరీ ఫర్ హార్సెస్ okay so that is the reason why horses were always in scarcity for all the kingdoms in india they used to import them from west asia even from europe right so idi mana region anedi horses ki anta correct ga set ayya region kaadu okay this is the geographically naturally also fine this is the thing about ivc and now coming to later phase of ivc see later phase of ivc you will find that there are certain changes that happened in the harappan civilization there is one early harappan phase right 3200 to 2600 and then mature harappan phase 2600 to 1900 and then later harappan phase from 1900 to 1300 so, right so all the best things we see standard weights measures stated seals and all that all that happened in the mature phase right coming to this later phase of indus valley civilization the things was that urbanization it declined a lot urbanization it declined a lot and people started moving towards agriculture this was the first important feature which we can observe agriculture start ayindi and another thing was in mature harappan phase you will find that entire indus valley civilization as a compact thing and interconnected thing whereas in later harappan phase in these 1900 to 1300 period you will see that it got divided into separate pockets gagar hakra valley east punjab region and then some parts of makran coast some parts of sindh in this way into five parts it got divided entire indus valley civilization it got divided into five sub regions into five sub regions which are loosely connected not that interconnected this is the first and foremost thing observed by the historians mottam oka unit laga undedi anta crumble aipai five different units laga aipai the linkages between them are also largely weak so this is the first thing they observed ivc five cities ka five regions ka cities ka five different regions laga vidipoyi vaati madhye linkages anta strong ga ledhu it means that there was this declined centralizing tendency in ivc so ivc as a one civilization 
it started losing its prominence. Okay, IVC, it started crumbling. Another man Okay, it started its decline. And along with this five subregions getting divided into five subregions across the larger IVC area, the thing was urbanization saw a decline. The settlement size, Ella Japtana urbanization tagin than ante, the settlement size started reducing. Earlier the settlement size was 200 hectares, 350 hectares, 150 hectares and all that. Now here the settlement size got reduced significantly. This is one important thing. First one you can write this and second one you can write this. Urbanization declined because the settlement size, the average settlement size got reduced. This is the second thing. And third thing was that very important thing. In these subregions and also in isolated settlements of Indus Valley, the thing that was ob observed was that many regions they went back to Chalcolithic times. They started going back to backwards. See, from Neolithic, any culture would move to Chalcolithic. From Chalcolithic, it would move to Bronze Age. From Bronze Age, it will move to Iron Age, right? But here the observation was that many cultures, isolated settlements in IVC, they started moving backwards. And a development of walls in the, they faced underdevelopment. This is the thing. So they started moving backwards to Chalcolithic times. So this is a significant underdevelopment in the part of IVC, later IVC. Obviously, the underdevelopment. Logical ga juice the bronze gun pit no lo, next iron gun pit no They should start smelting iron also. They should start using iron. They should start using iron plows. Right. They should start clearing the forest using the iron axe. All these things they should happen logically. But mali stones were done ki vena kill penar. So they started using the combination of stones and this thing. And next important thing was decline in the pottery. Decline in pottery. Decline in pottery and the pottery was used, no doubt about it. But the design patterns and all that, they were not that intricate, they were not that beautiful as they were present in the mature phase. Okay. So, regular normal pottery they were used. So, a glaze and the intricate designs. So, and the pottery was of largely uniform shapes and sizes. It means that there was this. Again, same thing, Malayanaki Bainatan. So, historians they felt this pottery of the later IVC phase was not as progressive or you can say as, as sophisticated as the mature IVC pottery. This is another important change. And the absence of scale, absence of standard scale. Asal standard scale and can be led. Later I V C uh, excavations lo and the Manuminda Josanga the ivory scale Durkindi in Lothal. Shell scale it was found in Mohenjadaro. So such scales, uniform scales, which were of one feet, which were of cubic feet and all that, those scales they were completely absent. Ante even are the exactly. Economy the Kibendi. So scales who measures who weights who the Kibena and Tartha went under and the trade Jaragat Lathan. Jerina Guda, it was happening in a haphazardous fashion, not in a sophisticated regular fashion. This signified that there was this huge decline in the trade. And then decline in the trade with overseas trade, especially. Decline in overseas trade. Decline in overseas trade. Right. So these were the features of the later IVC civilization things. So, some of these cultures, if I even like the Gagar, Hakra, 
East Punjab, Makran. So these sub-regions, some historians, they don't want to label them as part of Indus Valley Civilization because most of the important features of Indus Valley Civilization, they are missing in them. Okay. Kavati, some historians, they say that we, it is not proper to give them the status of IVC, reduce their status and call them sub-Indus cultures. Anjapi chapter. Papa Mati Nandi ne demote jese is naru. Demote jese si meek IVC anta scene le du. Okay. So, meer basmati rice ka du, normal rice hai. He will be called as sub-Indus cultures, not as IVC. Indus Valley civilization anna maata meek vaadamu. Anna di historian's opinion. On these regions because of the decline in the features. Urbanization le du, standard weights and measures le du, long distance overseas trade le du. Le du ante graduate heavy decline right and all these things so pottery is of not that quality and some regions went back to chalcolithic times so we turn it valla some they refer to them as sub indus cultures fine hmm. Hmm. See, the knowledge did not disappear as such, but there are various reasons, I will discuss them. So, why Indus Valley civilization, which saw its peak, why it got reduced? So, there are various theories or you can say various explanations given by historians, why this might have happened, right? Actually, logically speaking, if by that time itself, IVC was a great civilization with standard weights and measures and all that, it was an urban thing. So, India should have progressed in this graph, right? But India had to face graphs like this. Fine. Why this might have happened? There are several explanations to this. The first explanation being why Indus Valley civilization declined. The first explanation and the explanation which is not accepted by many people due to the recent finding is, is that invasions by outsiders, not Aryans as such, invasions by outsiders. This is an explanation, but nobody accepts this explanation now. But we need to know it. Historically, we need to know it. The thing is, some historians based on certain, uh, what you can say, group of skulls and skeletons found in some wells of Mahanjadaro and some other sites in Indus Valley civilization, they came to a conclusion that there might have been some attacks huge attacks on the Indus Valley civilizational sites that led to mass murder of communities in IVC. So, people in IVC got threatened, so they started disappearing and that led to decline of IVC. So, that is how they went back to agriculture, they went back to Chalcolithic times because of this destruction caused by invasions. Okay. Because in some sites, there were this marks of hackings. So, Narikinat don't take that. So, axe hackings and all that, they were found on the skulls. So, it says that there were invasions. Okay. They came to that conclusion, especially people like Max Muller and others, they gave this conclusion. But this conclusion, it is now, it is totally rubbished away. It is not accepted because those skeletons, group of skulls, skeletons, those marks of hackings and all that, they can be due to internal struggle also, internal strife also. Why that should be attributed to some invasions by outsiders, right? So, and there are various other genetic explanations and all that that have shown that there is no large scale presence of migrants in this area, right? So, this is one explanation which is not accepted. And second explanation and very logical explanation accepted by many is repeated floods. repeated floods in Indus river and its tributaries. So, that led to decline in the cities over a period of time. The mistake historians they feel that IVC people have done that is, IVC people they did not shift to new areas or they did not innovate new technologies that could prevent the flooding. 
that is the mistake they have done they say that they did not move away to new areas which are much safer than the uh, immediate banks of the rivers or they have not uh, constructed any effective dams, reservoirs and all that so that these floodings can be prevented. And again, some Indus Valley sites you will find under seven layers. So, one layer of Indus Valley settlement would be there. If we dig deeper, there would be another layer. If we dig deeper, there would be another layer. And our place and the seven times of flooding and it got completely covered by the alluvial soil. But still people made the settlement on the same thing. So, seven layers, four layers you can find. So, this might have led to the decline of IVC. This was another explanation and mostly accepted explanation by the historians. right? So, they should have moved to some other place. This is the thing. And some say it is because of the desertification. So, some historians they cite some studies, geographical studies and all that and they say that there was this extension of desertification in this area. And this extensive desertification made the soils to lose fertility there was decline in agriculture produce and there was this decline in urbanization. This explanation is also given. And some historians they say it is because of earthquakes. There are evidences that show that there were earthquakes. Floods, desertification, earthquakes, invasions, low rainfall, all these are reasons. And some even attribute it to change in the river course, change in course of rivers. Change in course of rivers. And some even suggest epidemics. Pandemic Radha, your choice. So, you can use either of it. So, all these are the different reasons. Kondha Raymond Arante, Kondha epidemics like cholera and other they might have come. But one thing is for sure is that there was a combination of all these factors across IVC because historians they conclude, they give all these reasons. And but these reasons they are specific for certain regions only because IVC it is an area of 8 lakh square kilometers. In the area, one fourth of India's area would it end because of one single reason? Is it possible for one single reason to end everything across 8 lakh square kilometers? No, it is not possible, right? So, it is not possible. So, historians they say. For some regions, it might be true. For example, desertification. Desertification might be true for regions in Haryana. For example, Banwali, Kalibangan, such areas of Rajasthan, Haryana region, they might have got affected with desertification phenomena. So, people have, might have left the cities and they might have gone back to agriculture because land was not yielding so much of produce. So, all had to go and work on the fields. So, that might have led to de-urbanization process in Rajasthan, Haryana, in parts of Sindh which are adjacent to Thar Desert, right? obviously. And then change in the course of rivers, 
this might have happened in regions of Saraswati river or Gagar Hakra river. So, Saraswati river. E region lo people din is affected. In some regions near Delhi, which is seismically active, earthquakes would have, would have happened. Right. So, epidemics would have happened in some other parts. So, in this way, each region, each sub region, or you can say each part of IVC, it might have faced different reasons. Right. And that gradually led to a decline in IVC over a period of time. From 1900 till 1300, over a period of 5 600 years, it gradually declined. Some went back to Chalcolithic times, some went back to even, uh, some went back to megalithic era. In that way, the progression got declined. So, these are various reasons that are given. Okay. So, that might have led to what you have asked the reduction in the knowledge systems, the disappearance of knowledge systems, right, due to flooding, desertification, people moving away and all that, right, this is the thing. The problem with Indians from the beginning was that the knowledge systems, they were transferred orally, they were not transferred in written form, that is the biggest problem with Indians. So, this is the thing. So, this oral transmission of knowledge might have also contributed to this thing. oral knowledge transmission. And some parts they might have genuinely faced some invasions. No, we cannot rule it out also. So, it is a so finally, whenever you write about the decline of Indus Valley civilization you have to mention all these reasons. So, seismically active regions facing earthquakes, low rainfall in some areas, desertification in some areas, floods in some areas, change in the course of the rivers in some areas, right. All these are the factors. So, one single factor cannot affect or you can say cannot uh, make an entire civilization of 8 lakh square kilometers decline. So, it would definitely be a combination of several factors across the IVC that led to decline, that led to reversal in the process, right. And we have already seen what were those features, how that reversal happened, absence of standard scales, right, absence of glazed pottery, all these things we have already seen, reversal to chalcolithic times and all that, fine. So, now take two minutes time and ask if you have got any doubts. Mesopotamian invasion and other than key scope led, elant evidences led. Aryan invasion key kuni imander and kuni evidences on I. Aha, ledo, so, uh, this Max Muller and others and even other historians who say this theory of Aryan invasion theory as a reason for decline of IVC, they say that Aryans were not that sophisticated to use all these things. Aryans were primarily pastoralists. So, who uh, were mostly dependent on war campaigns and animal herding. So, they had no knowledge of this long distance trade, crafts and all that. So, they were primarily agrarian people, cattle rearing people. So, that is why they could not use all these things. So, that is the explanation given. And again, you will see second wave of urbanization only during the times of Mahajanapadas. Both Rigvedic times and later Vedic times, they are rural settlements. And again, again, Rigvedic times, we later Vedic times, we manakokka settlement, kodakokka bedda city, kodakokka we cannot find them because most of the structures were mud structures or sun dried brick structures. So, they got uh, what you can say, they got extinct literally over a period of time, fine. So, they were predominantly rural. Hmm. 
మిగులుతారు కదా అవును అవును అదే చెప్తున్నాను కదా సి వాట్ హీ ఆస్కడ్ వాస్ రిగార్డింగ్ ది యాబ్సెన్స్ ఆఫ్ నాలెడ్జ్ సిస్టమ్స్ రైట్ సో వెన్ మ్యాసివ్ ఫ్లడ్స్ అక్కడ్ వెన్ సిటీస్ ఆల్ టుగెదర్ దే వ్యానిష్డ్ అవే సో పార్ట్స్ ఆఫ్ హ్యూజ్ పార్ట్స్ ఆఫ్ ద సిటీస్ దే గాట్ వ్యానిష్డ్ అవే దెర్ ఈస్ ఎవ్రీ ఛాన్స్ ఆఫ్ దట్ నాలెడ్జ్ సిస్టమ్ ఎండింగ్ దేర్ ఓకే ఎస్ దెర్ ఈస్ వెరీ మచ్ ఛాన్స్ ఆఫ్ దట్ ఒక ఏరియా అంతా మునిగిపోయింది టెక్నీషియన్స్ ఈ బర్న్ బ్రిక్స్ చేసే వాళ్ళు ఉన్నారు వాళ్ళందరూ చనిపోయినారు so nobody would know how to make burnt bricks nobody would know how to make glazed pottery with intricate designs and all that yes there is a chance of this entire settlements getting submerged that's there alane knowledge systems anni end ayipoyina sir don't know what flooded but the people who built the city like the structure or knowledge like we can build like this city those people only migrated on uh, after later they సీ ఈవెన్ దో యూ హ్యావ్ గాట్ నాలెడ్జ్ యూ షుడ్ హ్యావ్ రిసోర్సెస్ టు డూ దట్ ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఇఫ్ దెర్ ఈస్ అ కాంబినేషన్ ఆఫ్ థింగ్ యూ గాట్ ఎఫెక్టెడ్ బై ఫ్లడ్స్ అండ్ దెన్ యూ మైగ్రేటెడ్ టు సమ్ అదర్ రీజియన్ అండ్ దట్ రీజియన్ గాట్ ఎఫెక్టెడ్ బై డెజర్టిఫికేషన్ స్లో లో రెయిన్ఫాల్ అండ్ ఆల్సో కో చేంజ్ ఇన్ ది కోర్స్ ఆఫ్ ద రివర్స్ ఇఫ్ ఆల్ సచ్ థింగ్స్ హ్యాపెన్ ఈవెన్ దో యూ ఆర్ ఎ క్రాఫ్టీ పర్సన్ ఎ గ్రూప్ ఆఫ్ పీపుల్ యూ ఆర్ ఆల్ క్రాఫ్టీ పీపుల్ యూ గాట్ మైగ్రేటెడ్ టు సమ్ అదర్ ప్లేస్ but you don't have time to do all that because you should be engaged in agriculture just to maintain your survival then how will you find time how will you find surplus to build cities that's the problem na huh? see the problem with uh, this agriculture thing is if it provides surplus only you can build cities you will have that luxury to do things you can pay the people who are not engaged in agriculture so if the agriculture is not producing surplus you can't do all these things even if you got knowledge that's the problem okay i think you understood it's not possible because even if you are a crafty person if you are not engaged if you have to be engaged 24 by 7 in agriculture animal rearing and all that you can't build cities and you can't build cities with isolated communities right you have to build cities the growth of cities it takes a lot of efforts it should happen in an organic fashion it can't happen just because few people thought of making it happen that too in those times it was much more difficult so without not agriculture not surplus it is not at all possible city, like the house or the channels hmm it is like by seeing the difference like some alien came and made the city by looking at it no no alien made it how can aliens Sir, so you say that uh, it was done by aliens i am not saying aliens uh-huh. it is by looking at it is like some other people only did it who did it other see okay if you don't believe in this aspect of absence of knowledge system see you say that there can't be a, con- a complete discontinuity in knowledge system that is your argument right but i'll tell you one example that there can be a complete discontinuation of knowledge system okay there can be a complete discontinuation of knowledge system for you know marco polo marco polo he, the one who came to rudrama devi during the times of rudrama devi in kakatiya times he visited india okay so he visited india from europe traveling by sea route okay traveling by sea route and all that he came he visited and then he has gone to china and all that then why vasco da gama again in 1498 had to take lot of effort to discover the sea route because there was a discontinuation in the knowledge system on sea travel in european society okay again they had to revive it again they had to start rediscovering the sea routes how to travel to india from uh, west asia to india how to go from africa to india how to reach all these things they had to revive the tradition of uh, long distance sea travel and all that so genuinely there exists this aspect of discontinuation of knowledge systems yes it happens 
ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ వై వీ ఆర్ రివైవింగ్ సర్టెన్ ట్రెడిషన్స్ నో ఇప్పుడు అగ్గిపెట్టలో బట్టి చీరం చేస్తారంటారు కదా సో ఓన్లీ ఫ్యూ పీపుల్ దే కెన్ డూ ఇట్ అర్లియర్ మెనీ కుడ్ డూ దిస్ ఆస్పెక్ట్ ఆఫ్ వీవింగ్ ఎ శారీ విచ్ కుడ్ ఫిట్ ఇన్ టు ఏ మ్యాచ్ బ్యాక్స్ బట్ దెర్ వాజ్ దిస్ డిస్కంటిన్యూయేషన్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ నాలెడ్జ్ సిస్టమ్ ఫర్ మెనీ ఇయర్స్ అగైన్ పీపుల్ టుక్ ఎఫర్ట్ దే మేడ్ ఎఫర్ట్ దే రివైవ్డ్ ద ట్రెడిషన్ అండ్ సమ్ పీపుల్ దే ఆర్ నౌ ఏబుల్ టు డూ ఇట్ వై దిస్ డిస్కంటిన్యూయేషన్ ఆఫ్ నాలెడ్జ్ సిస్టమ్ హ్యాపెడ్ బికాస్ ఇన్ బ్రిటిష్ ఎరా మెనీ పీపుల్ హూ ఆర్ ఎంగేజ్డ్ ఇన్ దిస్ ఆస్పెక్ట్ ఆఫ్ హ్యాండ్ క్రాఫ్ట్స్ వీవింగ్ అండ్ ఆల్ దట్ దే లెఫ్ట్ దట్ ప్రొఫెషన్ and they migrated to various areas and this knowledge system of weaving different types of clothes it ended right many things for example machli patnam cloth it is known for the speciality that once you wash it it will get more shine okay again if you wash it it will get more shine so it is it was designed in such a way now that knowledge system is not present it is completely gone okay so genuinely this absence of or you can say discontinuation of knowledge systems it happens across the world it happened not only for us for europeans it happened with regarding sea travel for us it happened see vikings they discovered usa north america canada north america greenland they traveled there they settled there then why didn't europeans know that there was north america till columbus going there because there was this discontinuation of knowledge system in europe that vikings our ancestors they moved to denmark they moved to canada so they know these lands of denmark Can- sorry uh, greenland canada north america and all that so this discontinuation of knowledge system it happened there also who were the vikings vikings they were the people of sweden scandinavian countries so scandinavian people they built the ships and they have gone as far as greenland canada and they settled there but did the other europeans they know them no once columbus has gone there discovered them he said it is india they believed it is india wo and wo aapas aaye aaye nahi they went there and they settled there isliye unhe pata nahi koi bhi so but there should be a continuation right that their ancestors might have told the next generation their generations would have told the next generation that there was a group of people huge group of people vikings who traveled to the western half and they settled there they should know it right all would have not ex- uh, taken away the things and gone away right there would be a substantial number of people who had known that migration pattern right this is the thing so absence of knowledge systems it happens regarding mig- due to migrations due to distress due to government policies especially like the weaving thing that happened during british india it happens knowledge system discontinuation if it could happen in 19th century and 20th centuries why not in 1900 bc right so this happens there are various examples for this okay nice any other doubts chusara mano doubt wala vikings da gelle mano so try to ask doubts no problem i think so this is about indus valley civilization so the important sites also you have seen so surkatoda burj hum is the site where dog burials are present that we have already discussed all right so horse bones surkatoda this is the thing and then there was another two coastal sites sutkajandor and lothal lothal and sutkajandor these two are coastal sites which had port facilities and lothal it has got proper dockyard and all that fine next coming to fine so now there was this decline in this ivc they went back to chalcolithic times and all that in this scenario from 1500 onwards historically 1500 but there is controversy with regarding these dates okay as new technologies are coming up earlier it was carbon dating then radio dating now they are doing this analysis of pollen grains so based on the grain that we find in the settlements they are doing this pollen analysis based on that analysis some other years are coming up okay so years they change in ancient india don't worry based on the sources as per the technology they use and all that 
So from 1500 onwards, there is this phenomenon of the so-called Aryan invasion and now it has got changed to Aryan immigration. Aryan immigration into India. Aryan immigration into India. So, it coincided with the period of decline in the Indus Valley civilization. So, because of this coincidence between these two phenomena, Max Muller and other people, they tried to explain it through Aryan invasion theories. Okay, that Aryans, they invaded, they destroyed IVC and they came and settled here. That they tried to project it as if it happened, but it did not happen. Now, historians, they accept this Aryan immigration theory. Fine. Who were Aryans? Why did they get into India? Aryans for many years, especially in 20th century, what happened was that because of Hitler and his ideas, many people even today, they believe that Aryan term is associated with race. So, Hitler was like, Hitler and the Aryan domination, Aryan races, eugenics and JP, Aryans are the superior race who are uh, born to rule the world and JP. He learned one end and the Marvel series laga. He had some beliefs and all that. So, because of that, it got racial connotations and it was associated with race. Blue eyes, blonde hair, 6 feet height, minimum of 6 feet height, and Mahesh Babu features. So, they attributed all these good features to Aryans. Simple, good features to Aryans. Manavete handsome good features and Kuntama. I have any Aryans attribute Jesus now. So, race, how they look? Blue eyed, blonde head, six feet height, very well built, all these things. Race. But the latest things, they say that Aryans, they were a language group. People who used to speak some kind of Indo European languages. some kind of Indo-European languages. Language group and it is now accepted. Yes, it is a language group. Even Dravidian thing also, it is not a racial thing, it is a linguistic thing that we have already discussed. IVC lo so, language group, group of Indo-European languages and most prominent being Sanskrit when they came and settled in India. Sanskrit language group. And some explanations they say that are this term are it is associated with agriculture. the one who is associated with agriculture or you can say broadly land, land related activities, primary activities. So, group of people associated with land and agriculture. This is another explanation given to the term Arya. And some they say Asalidanta Gadu Aryan is simply a honorary term. Honorary term like sir, sir gentleman and tente, sir and day will under sir group and Japanangada, aligned and day, it is used as a honorific, right? Honorary term or honorific you can call. So, Aryan was also just a honorific. So, Aryan means a gentleman, a person belong to a, belonging to a respected family, respected profession, you can say anything, a respectable person. So, it is just a honorific. In the Gante, we learn your Tarante, Ramayana Mlo, we till learn Dante, even in original Ramayana. So, Mandodari, she calls Ravana Sura as Aryaputra. 
So, Aryaputra, do not do this, it is not good for you and all that. Does that mean Ravana was a Arya? No. Because Arya, it is loosely used in our Puranas, epics and all that, just as a honorific. So, these people, when they came and settled, they called themselves or you can say, they are referred to as Aryans. That is so, there are various explanations to this term Arya, that it is, it is a race, but now this racial explanation, it is out of question. Language group, yes, it stands even today. And then agriculture thing, it is the latest innovation by the linguistics. And then it is a honorific term like sir, gentleman and all that. It is one explanation based on the epics and all that. So, these three explanations, they are logical. And among them, the most important is language group thing. Fine. So, now coming to immigration. Okay, they came to India. From where did they come to India? So, they should have some original homeland from where they have come, they have settled in India. And for that also, there are various explanations. Some say they are from Central Asia, Max Muller, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, this area. Some say they are from Arctic, Bal Gangadhar Tilak, he gave this thing. And then Tibet, this explanation is given by Dayananda Saraswati. Central Asia, Arctic, Tibet, Europe and some Interestingly, they say they are our own people, they did not migrate at all, they were there from the beginning. Central Asia, Europe or you can say Eurasian steppes. Sorry, sorry, here comes Eurasian steppes. <laughs> These are the theories. Tilak, Anand Saraswati, Europe, William Jones, Max Muller, these people, and our own, it is a theory given by some of the Indian historians. Sampurnanand, A.C. Das and others. Right. So, yes. Coming to this aspect of Central Asia or Eurasian steppes. So, this explanation it is given by Max Muller, the most important scholar with regarding uh, this Aryan invasion thing and all that. Okay. Max Muller, he was a German scholar basically. He came to India, he is a famous Indologist. He studied about Sanskrit, he studied about Arabics, Puranas, Vedas and all that. He tried to connect them with the German literature also. He is a German basically. And he gave this entire concept of Aryan being a race, Aryan invasion, they came from Eurasian steppes, all these things they are the creations or you can say concoctions of Max Muller. And in the 19th century ki, that itself was a great study. But later on these studies they got debunked, that is the thing. But many people the problem is that they still uh, insist that Max Muller is a great scholar and all that. But some say he has got, he wanted to prove that 
all the people who ruled india are from european region that's why he created this theory and he put under so there are various conspiracy theories in behind him but the explanation he gave was simple the explanation was that eurasian steppe is even today you will find as we have discussed just now it is a horse based civilization eurasian steppe is kazakhstan region and even to some extent ukraine region this entire region russia eurasian region basically ukraine russia kazakhstan this entire region and also central asian region you find this dependence on horse even today horse based civilizations they are all this is the first thing and second thing is that they are all nomads nomads based on cattle nomads based on cattle so horse based aryans are also people who are excessively dependent on horse and second thing initial aryans they were also nomads they had no knowledge of settled agriculture proper big scale settled agriculture they were animal herders this is the thing and he gave certain inscriptions also as evidence certain inscriptions especially inscriptions like bhogaskai bhogaskai inscription he and also other historians who give this or you can say who support this theory the first one bhogaskai inscription so in that inscription there are evidences that suggest that there was a conflict between hittites and mitites two groups so in those two groups the group which got defeated if i am not wrong hittites so they came and settled in india so one group it went towards the right side that is towards iran and the other group it went towards it came towards india so a a theory anta kuda endante it is based on this bogus cry inscription the group two groups had conflict one group got defeated and that defeated group it was in search of new lands in the search of new lands at hindukush mountains one group they went towards the right direction right side that is they would move towards iran and the other group they have chosen the left side path and that group it came into india that is based on bogaskai inscription right and in that bogaskai inscription why we take it as a standard thing we take it as a standard thing because that inscription it has got terminology gods and everything that are related to aryans whom which we can see in aryan books and sources mana rigveda lo inga migitha literature vedic literature lo kanipinche chaala terminology names of gods and goddesses you especially gods you will find them in bogaska inscription so definitely these people they are from there they have got roots in the conflict that was there that happened in the bogaska region so this is the explanation and yes max muller we can't say that he was totally wrong no because this inscription part is fact so definitely aryans have got some linkages with eurasian steppes that's for sure anduke asal iran actual peru aryasthana antaru iran the actual name of iran they say some people they say it is aryasthana so later on it got changed to iran because one sect of aryans they moved right and they got settled in iran and other group it came this side as suggested by this inscription fine so this is the first theory first and foremost theory okay next theory is arctic theory ide important anedu kanna kuda eurasian step is thing because it has got various sociological evidences as well as archaeological evidences second thing arctic so tilak in his book arctic the home of vedas in that book i have given okay okay explanation and and not silly thing it's a serious thing he says that aryans 
they have got this tradition of Yala. So they have this concept of considering six months period as pure and six months period as bad. Uttarayanam Dakshinayanam So Uttarayana period it starts from Sankranti. From Sankranti, the next six months we call it as the period of Uttarayana. And the next six months we call it as Dakshinayana. So this tradition came to Aryans. It is a Aryan practice. Right, Sanskritic practice, Aryan practice. It came to them because they lived close to Arctic in Russia. So obviously in that region you will find six months to be day and six months to be night at polar regions. Right. So why would they consider six months as the good period and the six months to be dark period or bad period? Because they had this experience in Russia, in Arctic zone. Okay. So suggesting this thing he says they might have come from extreme parts of Russia. So worshipping the sun as if he is the only source of energy, the most important source of energy, all such things. And then coming to Tibet, it is given by Dayananda Saraswati. So Dayananda Saraswati he says, these people they came in from Tibet. So many, his uh, theory is not that backed by facts and all that. He simply says that they came in from Tibet because many aspects of Aryan culture, you can find them in Tibet also. And there is this great barrier of Himalayas between Tibet and India. But how come there is this uh, commonality between Tibet and India with regarding culture, civilization and all that? This was possible because Aryans came in from Tibet. He says this. Nayanand Saraswati. And then William Jones, they say they are from Europe. Same thing, same explanation as that of Max Muller. So in Europe at that point of time, they were nomads, horse based society, cattle rearing, no fixed agriculture, all these things. So they are not from very near regions of Central Asia and Eurasia, they are from proper Europe. It is the explanation of William Jones. And then people like A.C. Das, Sampurnananda and others and many others also, nationalistic historians you can say or you can say Hindu historians you can say, they say that no Aryans are our own people. Aryans are our own people, they were residing in Saptasindhu region itself and they even say that, they even go to the extent of saying IVC and Aryans they are not different, they are one and the same. Okay. IVC people and Aryans, they were one and the same because of various factors, IVC got reduced. So Aryans again, they started a new thing called this Vedic, civil, Vedic culture and all that. So they give this explanation, but this explanation is not accepted. They show the evidences like great bath, fire altars, the presence of priests and all that, stating that Aryans have got similar practices. So priests were dominating the society, fire altars, uh, these yagnas and yagas were conducted, all these things were there. So and Ved Vedic people, they had the knowledge of mathematics. Similarly like IVC people, IVC had this knowledge of binary system and all that. So Vedic people also have got knowledge of mathematics. So suggesting all these, they say, Indus, uh, sorry, Aryans, they are not outsiders, they are very much Indians. Right. But their theory, it has got various deficiencies in it. Then why IVC people were not using horse? Why in Vedic times horse has become such an important animal? Right. So where was Sanskrit in IVC then? Not even traces of Sanskrit we can find in IVC. So all these are explanations that they could not give. But these are all the explanations.
again same thing it is a combination of all right in ancient india everything it boils down to same concept it is a combination of all we have to state all these things and finally we have to conclude saying that yes it is a combination of all so there might be people who came genuinely from central asia there can be people who came from arctic region tibet region europe and then some people they might have joined them mano line lo durinattu kondar mandi durpenar vallu so some might have joined in the bogi right that's how aryans they might have got found and that was the reason might be there were very there were many tribes in aryans as many as 30 tribes you can find in aryans right so they were not single group there were 30 tribes bharatas purus panchalas so many groups were there 30 tribes they were there right this is about the aryans and their coming in and uh, some historians even max muller they say that aryans they came in they have formed this a uh, thing based on the ruins of or you can say by destroying certain cities of harappa and for that they give the evidences like the term purandhara Purandhara, this title is given to Indra, Lord Indra in Rig Veda. So, Purandhara, it means destroyer of cities. Destroyer of cities. This term it is used for Lord Indra. Purandhara, destroyer of cities fine so why this title was given to lord indra if he if aryans were not destroying the cities what were the cities indus valley civilization had cities and these aryan people they came in they destroyed the cities that's the reason why their main god who is the deity of war and all that he was given the title purandhara asal lagapothe asal ee title tapane undi సిటీ సైడ్ లేకపోతే సిటీస్ని డెస్ట్రాయ్ చేయకపోతే వాళ్ళు అసలు ఈ టైటిల్ పెట్టాల్సిన అవసరం ఏముంది వాట్ ఈస్ ద నీడ్ ఆఫ్ కీపింగ్ దిస్ టైటిల్ సో ఇట్ డెఫినెట్లీ సజెస్ట్ దట్ దే డెస్ట్రాయిడ్ సిటీస్ దట్స్ ది ఆర్గ్యుమెంట్ గివెన్ బై సమ్ హిస్టారియన్స్ అండ్ ఇన్ ద సేమ్ వే దెర్ ఈస్ ది స్టోరీ ఇన్ రిగ్వేద దట్ సేస్ దట్ లార్డ్ ఇంద్రా అగైన్ హీ ఫ్రీడప్ ఆర్ యూ కెన్ సే హీ ఫ్రీడప్ వాటర్ he freed up water by killing the obstructor vrutasura so vrutasura ane rakshasudu he was obstructing the flow of natural flow of waters so that obstruction it was destroyed by lord indra and he freed up the waters so they say that it suggests deliberate flooding of cities by aryans by removing these barriers by destroying the irrigation networks that were present in the ivc people built by them they were destroyed by them that's how this freeing of water phenomena is portrayed in rigveda but that was there but uh, we can't clearly establish based on the such literary evidences that aryans destroyed ivc idu endu cheptunna ante how aryans came in how did they settle in you need to have the clarity and then we can get into vedic literature vedic society vedic economy and all these things later vedic times early vedic times later vedic times the differences all these things fine so these are the literary evidences regarding aryan invasion on ivc but these literary evidences they are not sufficient fine so tomorrow we will be getting into the aspect of actual aspect of how literature got developed so what are the various components in vedic literature and all these aspects